mean, it's, it's really just... All righty, you know. welcome back. You're watching Liquid Lunch. Liquid Lunch is uh, brought to you every single day on Biz TV, Biz Talk Radio, and also uh, the Money Station out in Portland, one of our new uh, affiliates. Thanks for joining us. Dow up 80 at 31.5, holding steady there. I guess this whole stimulus package is going to keep Mr. Market calm. Overstock.com, 107, still feeling very strong. Um, and Bitcoin poked its head above 50,000 this morning or late last night, um, but now down a bit at 48.4, so we're keeping our eye on that one. And uh, every Tuesday, we're joined by my good buddy, Dan Hernandez from Milestone Capital. Hey, Dan, how you doing today? I'm good, John. How you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm uh, kind of surprised how uh, the market's holding up because, you know, I'm looking at gas prices going up. Yeah, it's um, a- some other stuff. Yeah, it's kind of holding. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you hit it earlier. It's it's stimulus. It's uh, it's the stimulus that's already happened. It's the expectation of more stimulus. Uh, it it's earnings. I mean, look, it's going to be an interesting spring because everybody's year over year earnings are going to be up 20, 30 percent. So the market's going to have to sift through that and see, you know, what's doing well and what's just you know, recovering from the pandemic, but, but, uh, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic about the next, uh, couple months, you know, for those reasons. You know, Dan, uh, over my career, I worked for a couple of public companies, right. And, you know, public companies have all these wacky gap accounting standards and all this other stuff. And coming from an entrepreneurial background, I, you know, used to sit in these budgetary meetings and these pro forma projection meetings and say, come on, man, you like, tell me what number you want in the bottom, right? And we'll have some fun with numbers here. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is like yeah. a lot of gamesmanship. But the one thing um, why I did some PR with the numbers was, you like you said, you know, uh, these companies are going to be re- reporting 20, 30% up year over year. Um, but many of them were down like 50% year over year. So you, you got to go back 100 just to get even. Um so are they really doing well or are they just doing marginally better than the pandemic? Well, that's what that's going to be the challenge because, you, you know, all, all these companies are going to have expected earnings. And, and, you know, that when the street expects certain earnings and then, then the market kind of bases everything on those expectations, you know, earnings are good. Are they above expectation, below expectation? So so that's going to be priced in somewhat because you're right. I mean, and, and like I said, everybody's going to be up a ton. Um, so it's just a matter of sifting through that and see what, what up a ton really means. Does it mean we're doing well? Does it mean, does it mean we're, we're crawling back? So, uh, but look, the bottom line is, uh, people are spending money. So I, I think a retail numbers have stayed strong throughout this and, and what you're going to have coming up is, is just more things opening up, you know, and, and, and Philly again, I think. Uh, Jersey's up to 50% indoor dining, you know, assuming uh, that there's certain ventilation uh, requirements. I've been to Jersey, my friend. A lot of those restaurants are way over 50. They have pretty crowded. Uh, Nobody's counting. Yeah, (laughs) nobody's counting, but that's that's at least the legal number. PA, I think Philly just went up to 35%. So that's going to keep happening nationwide. you know, it, in a couple of weeks at this time, I'm going to be in Miami and, and I'll, I'll report from down there. But, uh, you know, we know what's going on in Florida. They're wide open. But my point is, it's just going to mean more and more people working. Uh, employment number is going to get better. Therefore, earning number is going to get better. I think we're going to see uh, we're going to see the travel and leisure sector start to pick up uh, as we approach summer. So I think. I think there's a lot of positives short term. Now you're right. Gas prices are going up and ultimately that can be a, you know, that, that can be a deterrent to, to some market movement, but the positives are, you know, there's just going to be a whole lot more people working. Earnings are going to continue to get better. So, you know, if you're weighing the positives and the negatives, you know, negative is increasing gas prices, uh, probably still the, the fear of, of income taxes, but that's not going to be till 2022 positives people more people working more people traveling more people spending and and that's gonna and and more stimulus probably coming yeah i recently was in florida and i'm laughing because 
you know, you got restaurants at 25%, 35%, 50%. I'm getting on a plane. It's 100% packed. And you're like a foot away (laughs) from the guy, you know, not even a foot away from the guy. So it's Yeah, that's okay. That's all right. One of the Uh, places where I do think there will be some good growth and some opportunity, like you said, is in the whole travel and leisure space because people have been cooped up for so long. As soon as they loosen up some regulations, I think people are going to be looking to fly away, get out of their state, get out of the country, do some things. And I think there might be some opportunities there. Yeah, a lot of the leisure stuff, I mean, I mean two, you know, two kind of different sectors because you have the airlines, but a lot of the, the cruise lines, they, uh, they had a bump in the fall and they've been, you know, kind of flat here lately, just kind of waiting to see what happens. Uh, so, it, you know, in that leisure sector, I would put cruise lines, I would put hotels, and, and they've been a little flatter. Airlines have been doing a little better. Um, but, yeah, people are starting to fly. I think, I think there's still a little trepidation about cruises. Uh, but, I, I, again, I think that'll loosen up as well, and, and probably a little, a little later. Uh, probably not until the fall, but I think come spring and summer, I think you're going to see airlines reporting 30, 40, 50 percent increases from this time last year, which, again, Old Stone is catching them up and, and making them close to even. But it's still going to be, you know, it's a necessary boom and, and it's what they need. Yeah, I'm seeing people post uh, pictures on uh, like Facebook and social media, gas prices like nibbling up to three dollars. I guess yeah. the signal to uh, the rest of the world, Joe Biden going to shut down the Keystone Pipeline, so they already know they could start jacking us. That's going to yeah. hurt people's disposable income right there. Yep. Oh yeah. No, no. And it's and, and look, summers usually have higher gas prices just by normal increased demand, and now you're going to have that demand really increasing on top of the closing of the pipeline. I mean, there's a lot of factors that are leading to. Uh, to gas prices going up significantly here over the next few months. What do you think? So, um, I'm in New York. You're in New Jersey. I'm down in Florida. Uh, everywhere I turn, there's somebody from New York or New Jersey. I'm sitting in uh, in a bar down there with a couple of business associates. The guy next to me is from Tom's River. The two ladies over here are from <laughs> Brooklyn. Everybody from New York and New Jersey is flocking down to Florida, it seems. Yeah, yeah. And California, and California people are going to Texas. Uh they, they, they want to get out of a high tax states, you, you know, primarily and, uh, you know, without w- without getting real political, but they're they're leaving, you know, Democratic states to go to, to go to these states that seem to be a little a little more open, a little more business friendly, uh, less taxing. So, yeah, that's going to continue. I don't see how that does not continue. Yeah. And, um, you know, this guy, Ron DeSantis, in the beginning of it, you know, the liberal media was crushing him. You know, he's a killer. He doesn't care. He's irresponsible. He's reckless. Um, But meantime, their hospitalization rate and death rate is lower than most of the blue states. Yeah. 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 Maybe he should uh, he should go the Cuomo route and and write a book and uh, and start doing daily uh, daily press conferences. Maybe he'll win an Emmy. But no, you're right. I mean, he. He, he was getting ripped early on, and 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 guys like Cuomo were uh, were, were looked upon as as the heroes, and and that tide is starting to turn a little bit, uh, but but we'll see. But yeah, no, Florida seems to be everyone I talk to down there, uh, they're they're wide open, and and the infection rates aren't high, so they, they seem to be they, they seem to be doing okay. I hate the term infection rate. You know what I mean? It's like a, a case rate because, yeah. you know, like my daughter, uh, she's 22 years old. She had the sniffles. She was a little tired. She got tested. She came back positive, right? And this causes like a total fire drill. Everyone in my family who was near her in the last two weeks is going to get tested and tested and tested and tested. Um, everyone's negative, but... Yep. Um, She's positive. We quarantined her. She's locked in the basement. But meantime, three, four days later, you know, she, she's, uh, it, to me, it was like a cold. And to her, yeah. she's like, Daddy, I think I had a bad flu, you know? Yeah, it's, it's you're, you're right. It's weird. We went through a couple scares where, you know, my wife, my wife got tested three times in a week because she wasn't feeling good and negative every time, you know, but that's, that's what puts you, it puts you in that mindset all of a sudden, any any element at all is uh, is potential COVID. 
Yeah, uh, you know, years the, ago, um, well, f throughout history, uh, we had sixty to 75,000, uh, you know, flu deaths every year. Um, and that's on top of, you know, 40,000, 50,000 pneumonia deaths. And then there's this other thing called um, influenza-like illness where it wasn't a flu or a cold, but it was something like it. So, like, you know, you start thinking all those numbers are down. Were all these even COVID? You know, the, it's like, I don't know, I think Cuomo's bad decisions on the nursing home scared the hell out of the whole nation. And everything yeah. became COVID. Yeah, no, you're right. It, it is funny how that works. How all those other, all those other causes of deaths have gone down. <laughs> um, so we'll see. But I think, uh, I think, well, while the numbers are varying state to state, generally things are looking good. And I think as as the vaccines continue to uh, to get administered and and down the road here shortly, we'll probably have a couple more vaccines available. J and J, I think, is close. Yeah, we're almost there. All right, Dan, yeah. Dan Hernandez is with Milestone Wealth Management. You can reach him at dhernandez at lincolninvestment.com. He's with us every Tuesday. You should uh, reach out to him if you want to know what's really going on. Dan, thanks, brother.